Can you hear me? Yeah. Right. Apologies for my croaky voice. Um, I've been suffering from a very bad cold. That pose was, was for you to say, ah. But, <laughs> right. Apologies for my croaky voice. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Um, yesterday, I cancelled all my appointments and made sure that I wouldn't let you down. And I'm very pleased to see very many of you here because I think uh, it's a very important event and you're all here, so pleased to see you. Uh, I'll move on to my slides. And that's the agenda today. We're going to cover Horizon 2020. Jasper's done a very, very good job on the SME instrument. Um, that is the tip of the iceberg. As Diane said, the whole total budget is about 79 to 80 billion, uh, depending on exchange rates and other things. But uh, uh, the SME instrument, 3 billion, is a massive chunk, but it's only the tip of the iceberg. So I'll try and cover it from other areas. I'll tell you a little bit about Vision 2020. Some of you here might already be aware of it. Others are thinking, who are they? And um, I'll give you some numbers. We're a new network. And of course, what's in it for you? I'll also try and demonstrate some of the case studies we've had in the uh, few years we've been around. So you've already heard, it's the largest, biggest, best, newest, cleanest, whitest, everything you want to say, research and innovation program ever. Okay, 79 billion it started last year from January. Uh, for those of you who are familiar with this area, you'll recognize that the budget wasn't even agreed till around November of 2013. So a lot of things uh, the commission actually did very well to, to kickstart on the 1st of January, even though a lot of the political ramifications hadn't been concluded. So the first year, I, I wouldn't have expected a lot of spend to have happened. So really, we've got six great years for this fund to be spent. You've been told what, what uh, the Commission's looking for, uh, the emphasis on the three pillars that Diane described, and the idea is that this huge fund, this huge investment from the Commission will act as a growth factor for the whole of Europe. So why are they focusing that much money where everywhere else in Europe we're hearing austerity? This is the only major budget that has been increased to such a significant amount. Why? Right? Uh, for those of you who are businesses, like myself, you'll have a cynical view. And, the, and it's fairly right, because we're losing out. We really are losing out in terms of higher-end global value chain. Some of you will remember 15 years ago where out, uh, offshoring was a fantastic idea. Well, let's move low manufacturing to, to low price economies. They'll never be able to do design. They'll never be able to do innovation. Well, actually, we've lost the battle there already. More than 70% of the knowledge is now taken outside the EU. So offshoring was a great thing because it lost us great jobs across Europe, and we kept the high value-added jobs. Not true. Right, so the developing Asia or developed Asian countries are gaining increased share of higher value um, income, right? Where we thought they would never be able to do it. Let them have the low dirty manufacturing jobs, and they will never move up the supply chain, the value chain where they have. Okay, so what's the idea behind this money? What is it going to do? The strategy is that it's going to give us smart, smart growth. We're not just going to grow, it's going to be smart. We're going to improve in our education, in our research. It's going to be sustainable, so we can maintain it for a long, long time. And it's going to be inclusive. In other words, we're not going to leave too many people behind, as sometimes happens. Um, a lot of our society is left behind, which then creates problems, as we know. And how is this going to be measured? The idea is 3% of EU GDP will go on, our, uh, on research and innovation and development. 3.7 million jobs will be created. Yeah? And we all know that young people coming out of universities, prospects have been low for a long, long time. Things are improving, but we do need new jobs uh, being created across Europe, and hopefully across in a, in a proper way. And annual GDP will increase by 800 billion euros by 2025. So those are the ambitious targets that this fund is there for. It's a lever to get the businesses and the universities work together and get those numbers out of there. If you 
Well, with the election less than 100 days away, you'll hear how wonderful SMEs are. They're the global driver. They're the engine of the economy. It's true. And more and more effort is being put in attracting SMEs to engage and to give them the help they need. And that's happening at local level, it's happening at regional level, it's happening at national level. And you can see the statistics there. And I think at the moment, uh, it says 58% of total gross value added across Europe is being done by SMEs. I think that will only increase as SMEs become more um, um, innovative. And if you look at company valuations, I mean, I was reading on the train about uh, Apple's profits. 12 billion pounds in the last quarter. That's just net profit, not gross. Now, to give you some scale of that, that 12 billion could buy BAE PLC outright. And that's just a quarter net profit. How many people do you think Apple employs and how many people do you think BAE employs? Yeah, the numbers are staggering. And it's the same when you look at retail and you look at something like Facebook or Google. LinkedIn, the numbers employed are low, but the impact is huge. So I think the SMEs will increase significantly. I know of a young uh, London-based business called TransferWise. They're disrupting transfer uh, rates, and they've just raised $58 million. Uh, they're one of the first new $1 billion businesses based in, in tech cities. So that London's, uh, as, as far as I know, is coming through, and the rest of Europe is coming through as well. So what are the barriers? Right? Every SME I speak with, and I'm a champion of SMEs, will tell me access to finance, access to finance. Actually, in some areas, there's no problem with access to finance. Uh, there's so much money floating, but it's in such a narrow, small area. And you've heard about Tech City, I mentioned it again. There's so much money around that even Angel, I, I, I interviewed for another project I'm doing, I interviewed. Uh, the head of the London Business Angel Network, and he was saying these crowdfunding platforms are destroying our angels. You know, they can't, they can't get in to invest because there's so much money you can get on crowdfunding platforms. So there's a disruptive model. There's access, the finance is there for, for seed businesses. It's there. It's when they move what they call in, in the tech jargon Series A, that's where the issue is, and Jasper showed you the slide where the Death Valley comes in. And most businesses will not have all the skills and knowledge. There's weakness in cooperation with external partners. People do not open up, and that's including universities. Universities are meant to be open, and they are open in most instances, but they will not collaborate uh, as easily as you think they will. And lack of internali internalization. You, SMEs, by nature, start, um, not today, but a lot of in the past, started by serving their local communities and then they would expand a bit more, and export was really, really 20 years down the line. Things have changed. Universities are now teaching in business schools to start with a global product. It's so easy to deliver global products, but you need to have partnerships. You need to have networks. I know there's somebody here from uh, European Enterprise Network. How many of you have signed up? How many of you receive letters from e uh, notes or emails from EN? Well, I recommend you all do it. It's funded quite well, it's free, and it's a network of huge, it's a huge network that can connect people and businesses, even if it's at a product level or at a European level, and there's a lot of investment going from the European Commission into EEN. Yeah, and there's nodes everywhere across UK. And uh, you're, you're from Wales, aren't you? You're yes, the Wales I EEN? Right. So, yeah, so, so leave, you'll see all our literature. Absolutely. And it's free. So you'll get an email and you'll see what other areas are happening. And it covers more than Europe, doesn't it? It's about 50 odd countries, isn't it? Yeah, we now cover 55 countries in the world and about 4,000 staff. Yeah, okay. For those of you who've been involved in European projects before as businesses, Horizon 2020 is different. Actually, it's been loaded in your favor as a business. It's, if anything, it's taking away from the corporates and universities. It's loaded in your favor in a big way, right? I'm going to talk about the collaborative side of things. As Jasper said, the emphasis has moved from R&D to innovation. So there's more about innovation. There's still support for R&D. It's less prescriptive. So the topics are there, but they're broad. And, you, and, and as Jasper rightly said, you can find 
the niche that you can belong in. Everybody who's got a fantastic product or fantastic idea that's been developed has an opportunity there. Um, the other thing I like about this is the commission is using a strategic approach. It's publishing its calls for two years in advance. So you know that when your product cycle or your research cycle is going to reach at a certain level, there'll be a call at that point. So you have two years worth of programs being published, what the commission wants. And Jasper, do you know when the 2016-17 is going to come out? I know 2014-15 is out. I know there's been consultation, but... Okay, so it'll be, it'll be, no, no, that's fine. It'll be coming out shortly. In a few months, you'll know what they want in 2016, 2017, and which areas they're going to fund. So as an SME, that's fantastic. So you can put it within your business plan if you're serious about Horizon 2020. And the other interesting thing for us as businesses, it's not within thematic, direct thematic areas. So it's not just chemistry. It's not biology. It's not engineering. It's across themes. So that helps. Uh, that's where innovation occurs. And cross-cutting themes are mainstream within the program, so they're not separate funding for those kinds of uh, things. Let me tell you a bit about Vision 2020, if you don't know uh, yet. We decided uh, to launch it about two years ago, um, a year before Horizon 2020 funding uh, had even been sort of uh, launched. Uh, there were still negotiations going, and the idea was to be narrow-focused, collaborate and network on Horizon 2020 only. So the network is not for everybody. EEN, if you're a business, you should certainly sign up. I'm signed up to EEN. Horizon, Vision 2020 is for those who are targeting Horizon 2020 funding. Okay? And we link SMEs and research organizations like universities, but we are very selective in the kind of research organizations we're taking. And we link to experts, consultants, legal advisors, etc., that are within our network, okay? They are people that other people have had experience with, so it's not just for every consultant. And I, I agree with what you said, as if you're an SME, make sure that the consultant's taking risk with you, okay? Unless you're absolutely confident and you've worked with a consultant before or they come up with a, a very high level of reputation that they will get you some funding. Um, and we're developing clusters, which I'll talk about in a little while. Right, so here's some numbers. We launched April 2013. We do not want to become the largest European network because we'll be thrashed by EEN. They've got more resources, they've got more services and more staff. So we want to become the best for Horizon 2020. Okay, it's an ambition, it's a target. Whether we are, it'll be one of those things. Currently we have, that slide uh, is from December, we have about 120 SMEs, 37 research organizations, and world-class research organizations have joined. Cardiff were one of our first uh, members that joined, and we're very pleased, and they're at the top table. The, the research organizations that joined initially form what we call a policy hub, and I'll talk about some of the things we're doing with uh, the commission. We've been invited for stakeholder consultation, uh, even though we're young, and we've been invited by other organizations to talk about how we can get more businesses involved with Horizon 2020, more right businesses. It's not, it, it is, to a certain extent, a numbers game, but it isn't a numbers game. We don't want 50,000 applicants in a quarter for you to, to manage. We want some very good applicants. These are the kinds of organizations that we're um, are within our network, and they provide the expert support that may be required. Imperial consultants, uh, Pira Consulting, you, you may know of. Uh, we have IQE there, who are one of our corporate members, um, and Quinn's our legal uh, firm that specializes in consortia agreement uh, for European projects. And this is how the Vision 2020 works. There are thematic areas that the Commission has identified as priority. And the network, when you join the network, you are asked for clusters that you are interested in being involved in. And then we try and connect you. and We match make you. So we have 30 countries um, represented. We have, as you can see, 340 researchers on the community portal that talk and uh, showcase, they say, we want to go for this proposal, we're looking for this kind of SME, or an SME will say we have this capacity. Does any university want to use our capability to lead a project? 
So if you haven't been involved in European projects, and if you think you're not in the Champions League level as the SME instrument, then collaborate with universities. And Cardiff's on your doorstep, I presume you wouldn't have traveled that far for here. But if you don't, uh, if, if Cardiff hasn't got the right researchers for you, then we can provide you another 37 organizations through Cardiff, with Cardiff's blessing, and you can connect with. That's how we've grown. And we are getting four inquiries a week from SMEs across Europe to join. And the main problem for us is most of them are startups, most of them are from accelerators and incubators, and they're not ready. So you'll see in a minute, because we charge, um, therefore we tell them that, look, it's no use wasting your money yet. There are other ways of uh, looking at it. Perhaps Horizon 2020 isn't for you. Here's an example. We have a health cluster which is being led by KU Leuven, and they put together two position papers, and it was led by um, one of the KU Leuven um, professors, and a big contribution was made by uh, Dr. Matt Smalley from uh, Cardiff University. We presented that to the commission. The commission was very pleased that they got a position paper from a multi-voice organization. So we weren't saying to the commission, this is wrong, that's wrong. We just said that in the two-year proposals that had already come through, we felt there were some areas that needed looking at, it weren't strong enough, or maybe in the future they could fund other areas. So our approach was actually appreciated. We got that in writing, that the approach we made wasn't just lobbying, 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 and for one type of organization, that the approach we made was very constructive, it was very good. So these are the wonderful people that <laughs> went to that. So for SMEs, what's the problem? Complicated landscape. So if you want to connect with the Cardiff, who do you contact? If you want to connect with Leuven, who do you contact? If you want to connect with CERN, who do you contact? That's the problem. And obviously bureaucracy can't go away, it's public money, but can we make it easier? Cash flow problems we already talked about, lack of capacity, and projects normally have long development times, including funding cycles. So my recommendation is, if you're not ready for the SME instrument, collaborate. Let the university do the heavy lifting, and you collaborate and you'll still get, to, uh, normally on a project size, you'll still get two to 300,000 euro uh, for doing a nice project. So what's the benefits? Meetings across Europe, early access, because we, we have within our network various people who are discussing 2016, 2017 kind of programs. You'll know what's coming through even before. We charge a 700 euro, about 550 pounds current rate, um, joining fee, and then there's no other fee to pay. Okay, and which somebody asked me, I think it was you, Sean, saying, is it a barrier for SMEs to, to pay? And I said, absolutely, we want it to be a hurdle for you to jump. If you don't think it's worth joining, you shouldn't join. Because I, as an SME, am willing to pay five pounds, 10 pounds, 1,000 pounds, but it's got to be of benefit to me. If you can convince yourself this is the right network, then you join. If not, then I suggest you don't join, because we, we certainly can demonstrate what we do. Okay. What's in it for you? A lot of this has been covered. Uh, the easiest one is to take advantage of business academic collaborative environment. We can connect you very quickly, ability to find suitable partners very quickly. So collaborative projects, you need three partners from three different countries. If you collaborate with the university, let the university worry about the partners, okay? And through Vision 2020, we can find you partners in other countries, but I'm sure Cardiff will be very willing to play with you. Uh, the reimbursement rate is equal to everybody, so it's 100% limited to a maximum of 70%. And the best thing for SMEs is you get, you don't have to worry about the paperwork on overheads normally, the indirect costs. There's 25% flat rate. And participation for SMEs has been simplified, so I think the Commission's done a wonderful job there. And the last one is for spin-outs and younger companies, where sometimes, because they're bootstrapping, they're not paying themselves a salary. And in the past, that's been a problem. You could not claim unless you were paying yourself a salary. So if you paid yourself 3,000, you could only claim 3,000 a year. Now the commission's come up with a unit cost which will pay you. So even though you're not drawing out a salary, so that is a good thing. Right, very quickly, a couple of case studies. Um, our member UCL in London uh, was approached by a company called Proximo. They couldn't help the company. They advertised on our platform, on Google Plus on the left there. Several people responded. 
LATAT this, uh, is a research organization based in Spain. They put in a proposal to the SME, the SME agreed, and they're working together and went very well. Uh, an aerospace research company that is a member of Vision 2020 contacted me. They were looking at how uh, to build a consortia because they wanted to go for some funding in Horizon 2020. Very quickly, we had responses and we had Bariland from um, um, Israel that wanted to collaborate with them. We had a University of Madrid that wanted to collaborate with them and an SME. So they got connected, they put a proposal together. <coughs> this lady is very, very successful in framework projects. She is she's one of my best SMEs in that sense, but she has tried LinkedIn, she has tried various other networks, and that was a remark saying that with Vision 2020, within a very short space of time, she knows whether people are ready to collaborate or not. And because everybody's focusing on Horizon 2020, it sort of goes there. This lady came to Cardiff in December. She was a new member and she had paid the subscription. By the way, the university subscription is much, much higher, just so you feel a bit better. Uh, <laughs> and it's annual, okay? Um, she wasn't sure whether the network was right, but they had paid, they said they'll pay one year. And when she left, she was just amazed. She's been thanking everybody ever since. And so from my perspective, the network's working. Very quickly inside Vision 20, we have clusters. And Health, I mentioned, is led by KU Leuven, Nanomaterials by LATAT, ICT UCL. Energy is being uh, launched by Cardiff, which uh, they started, and Evie is your person there if you want to start going on energy and start building consortia around that. We have 65 participants already there, and the, officially we haven't really launched the network yet. Uh, advanced Manufacturing Fraunhofer in Germany are gonna be leading that from February, they've confirmed, and security is gonna be Imperial College. Uh, so those are the clusters, and what we do is we get SMEs to link in with those. Um, so it's not just gonna be Cardiff University and Energy. Cardiff University are the lead there'll be other universities who are interested in that. So we make connections very, very quickly. We make the lines very, very short and support you where we can. 